Welcome again to our Facebook live service this afternoon. As we go through this word, 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 1 to verse 6. And the title of my sermon today is Begin to Hope Again. It, it, is, it, it is very personal. Begin to Hope Again. And I want to say this, that in the midst of this season, and we know the season that we are in, COVID, uh, in the season of COVID-19, brokenness, hopelessness has turned our youthful boasting to nothing. And, 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 and we have come to a place where we think, you know, nothing is impossible with God because of situations. And not only this uh, season, but also in our, in our houses, in our families, we have turned to, you know, to a place of hopelessness, brokenness. And, and, and we do not boast anymore in the Lord as Paul taught, uh, always taught us. And we have, become, we have become weary because of situations. And I'm saying this because most, most of, most of uh, the people, they have lost their jobs, businesses. And then things are not moving. And so in our houses, we have, become to the, we, have, we have come to that place of, you know, thinking that there's nothing impossible with God. And, 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 and most of the time, you might not voice it out. And, and that's, 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 the, that's the story, that's the matter of the, of, of, of the story in our families. That sometimes we might not, we might, we might not voice it out. Because of situation, you're thinking, who do I tell this story? Who do I, you know, tell what I'm going through? But you have come to a place, if you're watching this, where I can tell you that God will not answer your prayer, but he will come through for each one of us. And, and, and the story of, 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 of David in in. in in 1 Samuel chapter 30, it is that place. And, 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 and I've been loving something. When I've been going through the word of God, I've been noticing something. I don't know, some of us, if you're noticing that. Every time that God wants to come through for his people, one of the things that he does, he brings a crisis. When God wanted to come in that time of Abraham, he caused him to go to Egypt because there was famine in the land. When you look at this story in chapter 30, the first thing that the writer is telling us is that these people are in a crisis. They're in a place where the only person that they can lie, lie to or they can look to, it is God. Because the Bible tells us that the enemy had laid against Ziklag, not only Ziklag, but two cities. And, and the Bible tells me that they had overcome Ziglag. So the point was Ziglag. That they had over, overcome Ziglag and not only overcome but they had burned it. That is the first thing. Second thing, they had taken captives of women and all who are in it. Both small and great. So the crisis is here. That one, they have overcome this city. They have taken hold of this city. Two, they have Burned the city. And I want you to look, I want you to picture it in your mind that they have burned a city. So there's nothing for you to see. Two, they have taken captives, and I love, and I love here, they have taken captives women and all who are in it. They had taken captives of every, so there was no one in this place. Whether small or great, they had taken everything. So, when, when David came in, there was, there was nothing. And, 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 and this is what the Bible tells me in, in verse 3. That, and when David and his men came to the city, they found it burned with fire. An emphasis there of the word fire. And taken an emphasis of the word wives. So there was nothing to glory about. But only what was in him was pain, hopelessness. And the men were hopeless because their wives, their children have
have been taken away. And look at these men. They had gone, you know, to look for, you know, for food, to fight for this city. But when they're coming back, they're coming back and there's nothing. There's nothing. Big lag has been taken. This is a crisis. And, 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 and that's what I'm saying. And I'm saying this, that when God wants to have his way in our lives, the first thing that he does, he brings a crisis. And a crisis that we can only look at him. This is the same thing. That here, they could not do anything else. They could not need look at, look at him. But the people in this context, the people in this context, they never looked at God. They looked at a man. And that's where we all go wrong. When we always look for our solution with men. Our solutions will never be with men. And I want to take you to the Bible and see this. That the people of God are people who hope. The people of God are people who have hope. And I want to tell you this. Abraham looks at his barren wife. I want you to look at this. Abraham looked at his barren wife and in hope, he believed against hope and that he should become the father of many nations. Romans chapter 4 verse 18. Again, in the Bible, Ruth turns her eyes from a dead husband to a new country and tells Naomi, hear this, where you go, I will go. Where you wrote, I will Ruth chapter 1 verse 16. Again, Habakkuk sees the Babylonians army coming to destroy his people. And still he sings, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in God of my salvation. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 18. Micah corrupts under the weight of his own sin. And yet he boasts when he fall, I shall rise. When I sit in the darkness, the Lord will bring a light to me. So all these people were people who hoped. They were people who knew their God. And I want to repeat again that Abraham looks at his barren wife and in hope he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations. Romans chapter 4 verse 8. Ruth turns her eyes from a dead husband. I want you to see a crisis there again. To a new country. And tells Naomi, where you go, I will go. Where you rode, I will. And this is, this is where I want you to look at it. Habakkuk sings. Habakkuk sees the Babylonians army taking, uh, coming to destroy his people. And he sings. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in God of my salvation. And the last time, Micah corrupts under the weight of his sin. And yet he boasts, when I fall, I shall rise again. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. Micah chapter 7 verse 8. And from this story of David, the same thing. What God was trying to show these people, he, he needed this man and David to start hoping again. And I want, you to show, I want to show you this, that the heart of the reality by then, the heart of the reality was hopelessness. You know, most of the time we, 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 we look at people and say, let's, you know, let, let's be real in this, in this story. The, the same thing here, the heart of the reality in the story, it was hopelessness. By that moment, you peel back the layers to get to the heart of David, the heart of the layers of David, and you will find a black hole of brokenness. But the reality is we need to be people who look at God for hope. We need to be people who look at God for our hope. Romans 15 verse 13, that is what the word of God is saying. That, we, that, that Paul prayed and, and, and said that we need hope to believe. You will find the God who gives children to barren women. Genesis 21 and verse 1 and 2. I'm talking about the heart of the reality. Sometimes you look at the reality and you're like, here, things are impossible. But this is what I want to tell you. That, that the people of God are people who look at God for their 
their hope. And God who welcomes young widows, Ruth 2.20, and God who fills dissolution um, prophets with joy in Habakkuk 13, and God who breeds the cause of his sinful people in Micah. This is the same God who we are worshipping today. He's the same God. I want you to know this, that Christian hope, then it is not the kind that blindfolds itself to reality. I want you to understand this very well. That the Christian hope, the hope that we have as, a, as believers, is not the kind that blinds, folds itself to reality. No, it is the kind that looks at the newly sealed tomb and say, the story is not over. It is the, I don't know what to say, it is the kind that looks at issues like this and you, think, and, and, and you say, the story is not over. Yes. That the Lord is going to come again. Things are not over. And I want you to look at verse 8. My last, my last point. People of hope. And this is what I want to call this afternoon. I want to call the people of hope. Amen. I want to call them out. Because those are the people that God is looking for. The people of hope. The people who will believe in him. For the things that are impossible. And verse 8. Look at verse 8. Because of time. He says, and David inquired of the Lord. Not of man. David did not look at man. David did not look at the, man, the army that he had. The chariots that he had. The swords that he had. He never looked at that. Because by then, hopelessness, brokenness was in that place. But the Bible says that David inquired of the Lord Elohim. David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue after this army? Shall I overtake? Shall I overtake them? Look at something. David did not think only of taking them. He said, shall I overtake them? I love this. People, let me tell you this, that God is looking for the people of hope. People of hope. But the hope at the heart, you know, the hope of the heart of the reality does not guarantee something. Change is not only possible. It does not guarantee by that the reality of, 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 of the heart by then. It is like things are not going to change. But I want you to look at David here. He looked at God and said, not only will I overcome them, but God, will I overtake them? Will I go an extra mile for these people? Will I go an extra mile, everlasting God? Will I go an extra mile for my family? God, will you not only, you know, give me that job again, but God, will you not only bless me? Will you not go an extra mile for me, oh God? That is the people that David is looking for in this place. People of hope. People who think, you know what? I have a project. And, and God, you know what? You are going to go overboard. I'm going to overtake in Jesus' name. Because the word of God says that David did not look at man. David did not look at situations. David did not look at the bank. David did not look at the jobs. David looked unto the Lord. People of hope, you are the people that God is looking for. And when we reach for this hope with the fingers of faith, we will live today's brokenness differently. We will live a different life because we are looking, we are reaching for this hope with fingers of faith. Christians, you are looking for this hope with fingers of faith. It is not, it is not, you know, something that is not there. There is something with the fingers of hope, with the fingers of faith. Faith is there. And we will live a different life. We will leave that brokenness and live a different life. We will strengthen our backs. We will lift out chains. We will square our shoulders. And we will remain steady first. Immovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. 
it is not the works of man it is the work of God so this is what will happen in our lives we will be strength we will strengthen our backs we will lift out chains we will come out of those chains our, we will square our shoulders because we know a person we know Jehovah God and we will remain steadfast immovable always abounding in the work of the Lord because it is the work of the Lord always even in the world's world's most hopeless circumstances the world's remember world's most hopeless circumstances that we are in right now our default settings respond to this brokenness will not be nothing will not be nothing is ever going to change but instead it will be nothing is impossible with God but instead it will be this nothing is impossible with God we may still be soulful people right now as a nation as a family burdened with a lot of things broken with a lot of things and beat up with a lot of things but we will not be cynical people we are people who hope in the Lord Jesus we are people of hope we are people of hope and that's why I'm saying you need to begin to hope again right now in every situation that you are in you need to begin to hope again because it is the work of the Lord it is not your work it is not the work of man if you have been looking at man I want you right now to start living up a different life I want you to start looking at Jehovah God because it is the work of God it is not the work of man begin to hope again in this season of COVID-19, begin to hope again because everlasting God is bringing his healing in the name of Jesus. Begin to hope again in every circumstances where you have lost business. Begin to hope again because everlasting Father is with you. And Father, we thank you and we exalt your holy name. I want to invite Pastor Nyakeo to come and pray for, for us. But understand this, begin to hope again. If you will forget everything, remember this, begin to hope again. Amen. Hallelujah. What a word, what a word this afternoon that God has given to us. That David was in a hopeless situation. And I don't know what situation you're going through today. Maybe it's a hopeless situation. You find no hope in what you're going through. As a matter of fact, COVID has caused us to, to be hopeless in a certain way. But this afternoon, as a man of God, has reminded us today that we just need to look to Jesus and live in the name of Jesus. Whatever you could be going through right now, look to Jesus and live in the name of the Lord. Whatever you could be going through right now, whatever pain you could be experiencing right now, look to Jesus and live. Hope in God, for yet shall you praise him in the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. He is Christ, the hope of glory in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. So whatever you are, just start to lift up your voice to God. Start to declare that my hope is in God. I will not be moved by what I see with my physical eyes, but I shall be moved by what I see in my spirit in the name of Jesus. Mandebo katarababo, makatarababo bosi. In the name of Jesus, I declare over everybody listening to us that God, every spirit of hopelessness is cast out from our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we will not look God with our physical eyes because when we do so, we grow weary, we grow faint, oh God. But we choose to look at our situations with the eyes of faith, with the eyes of hope, in the name of Jesus. Therefore, I declare over everybody listening to us this afternoon that God, hope will arise in their lives, hope will arise in their lives. Hope will arise in their lives. Hope will arise in Jesus' name. Where there was hopelessness, where there was discouragement, where there was this, where there is distress. God, I declare this afternoon that God, we are arising one more time. 
time. We are arising one more time in the name of Jesus. Even to your glory and to your honor. And as the Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30, when David inquired of the Lord, later in a verse day, the Bible says that he pursued, he overtook, and he recovered. I came to declare over your life today that as you pursue God, as you pursue God in every area of your life, you shall overtake the enemy. Whatever the enemy has stolen from you, you shall recover it all in the name of Jesus. Therefore, Father, we thank Thank you this afternoon that we are recovering all that the enemy has stolen. Where he has stolen our hope, where he has stolen our peace, where he has stolen our joy. I declare recovery, recovery. The Bible says that David recovered all. David recovered all. We are recovering all in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We honor you, God, and we exalt your name. That even for that person listening to us this afternoon who has lost all hope because as the bible says in verse 1 and 2 of first samuel 30 where you have spoken to us from oh god that when david came back to the camp it had been raised down there was nothing they had lost everything and you're right there and you have you you have lost everything everything that you have but God is saying this afternoon according to that word that you shall pursue and that you shall overtake and that you shall recover all. I declare over your life in this time a season of restoration in Jesus' name. I release upon your life right now a season of restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. A God who restores whatever the enemy has stolen a god who restores whatever the enemy has taken he may have used doctor auctioneers he may have used friends to take it away but this afternoon i hear in my spirit the lord say that you shall recover it all you shall recover it all you have cried tears but god says i will wipe away your tears in the mighty name of jesus you have lost in every hope in every way but God is restoring hope and courage in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus why don't you wherever you are just open up your mouth and start to exalt the name of Jesus Come on, start to exalt the name of Jesus. Worship him. Help me to exalt the name of the Lord. My God, we thank you. My God, we thank you. My God, we thank you. You are wiping away every hopelessness in our lives, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Because Christ, you're in us, the hope of glory. And we worship you this afternoon. And we exalt your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be exalted, Lord. And be lifted up, our Father. In the name of Jesus. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. in advance and we thank you in advance for that which you will do in our lives 
Father, which you will do for that brother, Father, which you will do for that sister, Father, which you will do for our nation and the nations of the world as we have started to do for deliverance from the spirit of coronavirus, oh God. We thank you because, Lord God, we shall overtake and we shall recover it all in Jesus' name. And we thank you, my God, in this afternoon, we are in agreement together, Father, that you will restore, oh God, you will restore us even back to the gathering together in the churches. In the name of Jesus, I call it back forth in Jesus' name to your glory and to your honor. We thank you, Father, and we honor you and we glorify your name. For there is none like you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.